All right, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the stream. I haven't streamed in a little while because I've been moving uh, apartments, but finally, I'll move into Vancouver, BC here. So today, I'm going to be talking about how to start selling on Amazon as a complete beginner. So I'm going to be taking any questions from anybody, uh, you know, anything to do with entrepreneurship, passive income, Amazon FBA. Uh, and yeah, let's get started. So let's see here. Let's pop out the chat. Yo, Marcel, what up? Hope I, hope I said that right. Marcel, let's see. Yo, Vincent, Miguel, so welcome to the stream. Whoever wants to ask any questions, go ahead. I'm gonna try my best to answer everything. How do you grow an Instagram account? I would try to grow mine. Uh, honestly, I've been doing I've been doing it organically. So I've been just you know taking people from my YouTube, and I've been uh, you know basically people from my YouTube they subscribe, and so they you know they go on my Instagram and they they follow me. So I haven't done any of that follow you know follow like or any of that you know the weird stuff because it just doesn't work. So you know as long as you put out good content, you'll get subscribers, especially if you combine YouTube and Instagram together. So how much did you start earning uh, before you quit your job? So. I was cleaning windows at the time. I already quit my bank job. So I was working at the bank and uh, thanks Raul. I was working at the bank. I had a typical nine to five job. And so basically, um, you know, I'm young. So I just quit that job. I was like, okay, I'm done with this. And so I was cleaning windows and you know, when I was cleaning windows, I was earning like 500 bucks a day uh, cleaning windows. And so that I used that money to put into my Amazon product. So, you know, I was making 500 bucks a day, but I was working for myself. It was just me and my buddy. We were cleaning windows like locally. And so, yeah, that's how much I was earning 500 bucks a day, but you still had to go out there. You were still selling your time for money. So it still wasn't sustainable, right? What kind of bank account do you need to set up an Amazon FBA can be any bank account. Although I recommend a business bank account, obviously. Um, so start an LLC and then you can grab a business bank account, any business, uh, sorry, any bank and yeah. When you first started YouTube, is it normal to get no views? Yes, obviously. If you start YouTube, just like if you start any business, you're not gonna get any interest whatsoever. So what I recommend doing, put out good content, stay consistent. You gotta stay consistent, all right? Because if you don't stay consistent, most people just fall off after like three or four videos. So, you know, just stay consistent and you will get the views as long as your content is good, all right? Do I do mentorship? Yes, I do in the Amazon Freedom course, although I will be taking it out soon because I've got a lot of students, of course, so the link is below. Um, and yeah, you're at work on a Sunday. Damn. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to get out of that. That's dedication. Graham, what's up from Australia? How much did I put into my very first Amazon product? It was like 1500. That's how much it was. It was about $1,500, um, for my first order. This was about a year ago. Was it a year ago? It was a year and a month ago when I first actually, when I first started my YouTube channel. So I ordered, how many units was it? Like 250 or 300 or something like that. So what type of selling did you start with? Retail, online, wholesaling, private label. I started with private labeling right away because I you know, did a lot of YouTube research and I realized that um, retail arbitrage isn't sustainable because you always have to go to Walmart, Target, all these stores. It's not sustainable, it's not a business, right? To make money, you have to physically get out of your house, you have to go to the store and you have to go and buy you know, the stuff and look for deals. It's just not sustainable. Meanwhile, private labeling, I realized that it's basically creating a passive income system for yourself that, you know, generates money for you as long as you've got a great listing, got a good product, um, you know, it's not too competitive. So yeah. Let's see. How many courses did I take before I started Amazon selling? I took, was it, it was three. So I actually split it with my friends. So I don't recommend taking three, but we just, you know, we kind of got one and then we bought two of them. So I don't recommend taking that many, right? So. Yeah, but that way, you know, I think having more than one course is good too, because then you have multiple angles and you have like more than one source of information, which is good, right? So if you, you know, if you like, if obviously if you're, if you want more information, then yeah. How much do I make roughly from YouTube ads? Everybody asks me this question. I make great amounts from YouTube ads, <laughs> obviously, if they're running. Think about it. If something is running, right? And if something keeps running, obviously, you know, it's profitable. So yeah. When did my YouTube channel start to grow fast? How many videos? 1200 subs, 100 videos. Um, my YouTube channel started to grow fast that like, I would say it took about six to eight months of just zero, like nothing, of zero, nothing. And then, you know, eventually started growing. So yeah, 
All right. Do I purchase from Jungle Finder? You mean Jungle Scout, or is it for stats to purchase from Alibaba? I'm not sure what what you mean. Um, let's see. Uh, are the course videos still up to date? Yes, they are. There's actually going to be a big course update coming up very soon uh, because I want to obviously update the course. And so, yeah, that will come out very soon. I'm actually in the process of recording those videos right now. Um, so, yeah. What have been the best methods to pay yourself without being taxed to death? I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CPA, but you need an LLC. Okay. In Canada, it's a corporation. In the United States, it's an LLC. Um, so if you have an LLC, you pay what's called a corporate tax. And so corporate tax, it depends on what country you live in, but it's cheaper than your personal income tax. So obviously talk to a tax professional, but do not, do not just, you know, do not sell as a sole proprietorship, which means you kind of just don't make a company, you kind of just start selling. Um, definitely get an LLC. It's like 70 something dollars or hundred bucks around in the States, more expensive in Canada, super worth it. All right. So just get that and invest into a good accountant. Okay. That should be your first person you hire when you start making money, get a good accountant because it will pay off in the long run and actually in the short run too. So how long have I, do, have I been doing private labeling? I started a year, was it a year and a month ago? Sorry, a year and like a year and a month or a year and two months ago. So it was, I actually found out about it like last March, uh, mid March. And then basically I was profitable by May. So yeah. Biggest tip you have regarding optimizing PPC. Um, let's see. Okay, you need to keep checking it every couple of days. I would say every two or three days, keep checking the PPC, keep looking at your ACOS. Okay, so if you know what ACOS is, if you know what PPC is, watch my PPC videos on the channel. Um, keep checking the ACOS and take out the keywords that have the ACOS that is above your profit margin. All right, if you're confused what I'm saying, look at some PPC videos on my video, got a ton of great stuff. So um, yeah, just keep optimizing it. And also you wanna keep um, trying out new keywords. Um, Amazon actually suggests keywords for you in your PPC. So try playing around with the suggested keywords, um, you know, set them as phrase match. And then that way, you know, you'll keep, you can keep pulling your search term report. Um, and you'll be able to see, um, you know, like new keywords and so you can add that to your PPC campaigns. Did I build a website for cleaning windows? No, I didn't. Does my course include SEO? Uh, the SEO that you need for Amazon. Yeah. It includes every single thing you need to know to make six to seven figures a year on Amazon FBA. So how much time did I spend at the beginning to manage my account? Um, well, at the beginning, let's say before I was profitable, obviously quite a bit because I was making the listing, uh, doing product research, which took a lot of time. Um, and yeah, I mean, once it, once the product got in, I had to do a launch, I had to get the reviews. So at the beginning, quite a bit, but eventually, you know, after the, the your product's already selling, it's just a passive income system and you're trying to find a second product. So after that, not that much. How much do you recommend spending on Facebook ads? Honestly, the thing with Facebook ads is you have to be careful because with Facebook, the truth about Facebook ads is that it's a great way to get sales for your product. The problem is, is that you're sending traffic without being able to capture their emails to Amazon. So let's say this is Facebook and this is Amazon, your Amazon listing. In between here, there should be a place where you can capture their emails, all right? But the thing is, if you send Facebook ads straight to Amazon, it's really bad because you know, if you just do that, then you can't track how many people are leaving your Amazon store, you know, how many, you know, basically just what I'm saying is you need to have a click funnels. You need to have, have a, a, a website there that's like, hey, like if you want a discount for this product, here is, you know, put your email in here and then you have a system sends them the discount code and then they go to Amazon to buy your thing. So the thing with that's the thing with Facebook ads, but obviously with any ads, if they're profitable, if they're making you money, spend as much as you can because you're going to make more money from it, right? But at the beginning, start low, start with a small budget. What kind of marketing budget do I suggest? Um, let's say for auto PPC, let's say, you know, at the beginning you're doing your auto PPC campaign. So uh, let's say like 25 bucks a day, you know, for like three to five days. Cause that's the time it takes for Amazon to actually refresh and show you the performance. So yeah, that's, that's how long I would recommend. And then, um, you know, you, you then have enough information to like optimize and take out the bad keywords and then put the good keywords in. So yeah. How am I liking my new apartment? It's it's awesome. I actually found it really quickly. So I think guys in life, when you know exactly what you want, when you have the picture of it in your mind, you know, it happens much quicker than you think. How long does it usually take for your product to sell steadily after your initial launch? Um, actually, so you can get organic sales. The point of a launch is to get organic sales right away. So if you launch your product and then you get organic sales, that's, you know, that's the point, right? So if you're getting the organic sales at your beginning price, which is usually just above your break-even price, um, you're not making much profit, but 
eventually, you know, once you get more, you pick up more and more organic sales by being on the first page, um, you actually, you know, you strike, you can increase your price. So you start off at the price like this and then you can increase your price and eventually you're making more and more profits. So do I make more money with Amazon FBA or personal branding YouTube? Uh, I make more money with YouTube because um, it always pays better to teach than it is to actually do. Remember that it's, that's just, you know, it's just scalability, right? So, I mean, it's obvious every single person that you find on YouTube that, you know, teaches something, they'll make more money teaching it than doing it, right? Because you want an, a, an extra source of income. Why would you not? Right. And plus it's fulfillment because now I've built this community. I've built, you know, I've changed the lives of so many people with the information that I provided and with the motivation, with the entrepreneurial knowledge and my, you know, from my personal own journey and experience that to me, it's extremely fulfilling than just kind of locking it in my own head and doing it on my own. So, um, and by the way, speaking of personal branding, I will be releasing, um, you know, a lot more personal branding videos and content. So if you guys are interested in starting your like YouTube channel, social media, anything like that, like, you know, uh, stay tuned for the videos. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, be super pumped for that. Cause I'm going to like really, really put in my all, I'm going to, you know, talk about how, how YouTube changed my life, how, you know, personal branding changed my life. Why it's like the best business you can start or the best thing you can do for yourself. How long did, uh, how long did you spend learning about Amazon e-commerce before taking action? How long does it take to get to the first page? So, okay. You want to be a person that takes action super quickly. So, you know, let's say you found a business opportunity. Let's say it's Amazon, right? Um, and, you know, let's say, let's say you're learning it, you've got a course or something. What I would recommend doing, let's say you have a course or you're watching videos, do as you learn. So don't watch, you know, don't take all the information in because you're just gonna go one in one ear and out the other, right? So process the information step by step. Let's say you just learned about product research, start doing product research, like take action, okay? Because if you, you know, what will determine your success is if you actually take action today instead of waiting and postponing it. Uh, do I have a beginner's crash course I could link? Um, well, my Amazon Freedom course covers like every single thing you need to know. The link is below and it includes my, uh, you know, unlimited contact with me uh, via my personal Facebook chat like profile. So it's private. So yeah, the link for that is below. What camera am I using? I'm actually using my iMac right now. So uh, it's just like an iMac computer. So yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I think the webcam is like 720p. I don't think it's that great, but I'm happy. I'm happy you guys are enjoying it. So uh, let's see. One of my campaigns is showing 44% a cost on the campaigns page. So Pedro asks about PPC and when I click on it and go to keyword, it goes down to 33%. Hold on. One campaigns. Um, Oh, because basically your 44% a cost for the campaign, your campaign, a cost, that's just the uh, a cost averaged out for your whole campaign from all the keywords. And then you go to the keywords and then it shows individual a cost for every single keyword. That's all it is. A cost. Um, what does it stand for again? Average cost of sale. I think basically it's just, um, it's just like your profit margin. So basically how do I put this? All right. Let's say you've got a selling price of $20. Okay. And let's say you, you know, your profit margin is like, let's say 40%. Okay. And Amazon, if it shows 50%, if your eight cost for a keyword is 50%, that means you're losing money because it costs you more than your profit to obtain the customer. All right. You want that it costs to be below your profit margin. Mm. So when do I think private labeling will become too competitive? Uh, months, years. Okay. So here's the thing. All right. And this is probably the truest thing that anybody has ever said about whether private labeling is competitive or not. Okay. Listen to this guys. So with private labeling, and I really got to concentrate on telling you guys this. So with private labeling, um, okay, there's a couple factors here. So Amazon is growing. The amount of customers on Amazon coming in every single month, every single year is growing and it's outpacing the amount of new sellers. It will continue to outpace the amount of new sellers, you know, um, forever because the amount basically society is shifting from going to Walmart and going to these stores to actually, you know, they don't want to leave their house anymore. They just want to buy on Amazon. Well, if they're going to search for the product that, you're, that a third party is seller on Amazon uh, is selling on Amazon, they're probably going to, you know, find that product. They're going to buy it. Right? So basically the amount of new customers coming into Amazon always going to outpace the amount of new sellers regardless of how many people you see getting into Amazon or anything like that. Now, the thing is, Amazon will get too competitive if you are just doing very basic, you know, you're doing no research, you're posting up really bad products, like products that are super non-differentiated from other people. So you're posting up like, you know, literally like a, obviously not this, but like a pen or something simple, like a household item, like a glass, right? I mean, if you find a product 
okay, on Amazon. And it will solve the problems of a target market and it's not too easy to get into. You will always win and you will always make money, okay? This, this, what I just said is gold, all right? If there are some barriers to entry, maybe the category is gated, um, maybe there's not many suppliers, you will always win, okay? So remember that. Please make a video about optimizing keywords for PPC. I actually cover PPC extensively in the course. There's a video like specifically, I should go into my PPC campaigns and then I show you exactly how to optimize um, the, you know, the keywords. But there's a couple videos on my channel as well about PPC and I think I show, I'm pretty sure I show how to optimize it. So yeah, check it out, Hamoudi. So back to what I said, if you're just not, if you're not, you know, if you're doing the typical get rich quick stuff, you know, um, if you're doing the typical get rich quick, like you, you basically, you know, you start your seller account, you watch a couple YouTube videos, you know, maybe you bought a course and you just watched one of the videos and then you found some random product on Jungle Scout and then you basically like just try to do the same product that everyone else is seeing, you will probably fail. Like 100% you will, you know, 99%, I'm not gonna say 100%, but 99% you will probably fail simply because what is, you know, what is stopping someone else from just copying your business and literally taking all your money? Nothing, right? That's why you want to find a product that, you know, has some kind of barrier to entry that requires some kind of effort for you to actually go and source it. You have to look back. If you got a product on Amazon and if it took you literally no work, if it took you one day to find, there is a problem. Okay. There is a problem, right? So I think what I just said is like absolute gold in terms of is Amazon, like answers the Amazon, is Amazon too competitive question? All right. So let's see. Advice on dating as an entrepreneur. Uh, I don't know if I can give advice on dating as an entrepreneur. Um, I think that you need to make time, you need to make balance in your life for, you know, your significant other and for your work. The thing is, is you can't let one uh, distract the other. So you have to be very, very clear about the time that you spend. Like today, I need to do five hours or six hours of this work. I need to get this, this, this done. And then the rest of the time, you can't even think about work. You need to spend it with, you know, your significant other. That's what I think. For, uh, is my course only private label? Yes. Um, how do I feel about Amazon seller university? Um, let's see. Well, okay. Obviously my course comes with my mentorship, which I think is the most valuable part as well as the outline in my course. If you actually go look at the outline for the amount, like for the, you know, for the amount, for the price of the course, it is a super in depth, super extensive, like every single thing you need to know, all my mistakes that I made, all my experience from like you know, ever since I started selling on Amazon, I put it in there to maximize your chances of not losing money, of, of losing money, especially when you're in a tough situation trying to start a business, because I've been there, I've been there where I'm like, okay, shit, if I lose this, you know, $1,500, I have to go out and I have to clean like 15 more houses right now, like the windows. That's what I used to do. I used to clean windows. You know, I, I was like 21 years old, so it's just a side business, but that's what I was doing to make money for my Amazon. I'm like, I don't want to lose this money and clean 15 more houses, it's manual labor. So every single, all the, all the money that I lose, that's my own manual labor and my own blood and sweat. All right, so I don't want, but the whole point of the channel is to help people realize their potential with online business and give them an actual actionable, you know, stream of income that they can actually start. Okay, that is the whole point of this channel. I want to spread the word that you, you know, because I've built my life and I've built my dream life, I've attained my goals, you know, that I set for myself. And, you know, now I basically live the life of my dreams, like exactly what I wanted. And I, you know, became a millionaire at the age of 22. Anybody can do it. Okay, but it will take hard work. It will take patience, it will take extreme dedication and you will need a mentor. Like you will need multiple mentors. Okay. So it's as simple as that. All right, let's see. Have you had Amazon put a limitation on your reviews? Um, I, you have 23 in a, in a month and a half, haven't gotten like 10 days. Um, well you would have known if you got, because if you're trying to get reviews from, you know, let's say people, they would be telling you like, uh, you know, I, I can't post a review or you know, it's saying it's not letting me, right? So I would call Amazon, yeah. Who was my mentor when I first started? I had a lot. And like you guys, you know, I was searching on YouTube, like I was always looking on YouTube because I had no one, no one in my family was an entrepreneur. Um, I didn't have any entrepreneur friends, so I had to learn it all myself. I would say in 2018, your best, um, your best asset is YouTube and the internet. And that's what, you know, that's what I did. How complicated are taxes if your Amazon business is successful? Um, 
Okay, so you definitely need an accountant. Um, you know, I would, I would not recommend doing it without an accountant. Uh, it depends on what country you're from because state taxes vary. However, you're still paying the same corporate tax that you're, you know, you'd be paying for any business. If you opened a hair salon or if you opened any kind of business, you're still paying corporate taxes on your profits. So it's, it's as complicated as it is for any other business. All right, let's see. How do you meet friends as an entrepreneur? This is a great question. Um, I think that I think that it's a question that needs to be answered because you know a lot of people don't realize that entrepreneurship is a lonely game. It is lonely at the top because 99% of you know you guys know the saying 99% of the population against 1% of the population. Well, as an entrepreneur and you're successful, you're probably part of the top 1% of the population. So you know what you need to do and what I found that helped me the most is to have an entrepreneur um, mastermind, kind of like network. If you guys know what a mastermind is, read Thinking Grow Rich. One of the best books I've ever read in my life, and I read it every single year. Changed my mindset completely about money, and you definitely contributed to me, you know, getting to seven figures a year, becoming a millionaire at age 22. So you want an entrepreneur network. You want uh, people that are smart, that are driven, that are ambitious, and they don't even have to be smart. They just have to be driven and ambitious, and you know, relatively successful, or at least you know, at your level or slightly above, because you can bounce ideas off of them. And um, the second part of this is you want a non-entrepreneur friend circle. And these people don't even mention entrepreneurship with them. Like don't even talk about business with them. Just enjoy life with them. Just, you know, if you guys enjoy hiking, go hiking with them, you know, camping, whatever it is, play sports with them, right? Just normal friends. Okay. And don't talk about your business with them. And if they ask you what you do, you can briefly talk about it, but don't show off. Um, Shopify or Amazon FBA, both are great. And if you commit yourself to one of them, I am sure you will succeed 100%. Okay. If you commit and if you persist, all right. Um, and if you follow, you know, if you have a mentor, if you follow, if you have courses, if you follow a course, 100%, you will succeed. As long as you, you know, persist, you guys know the saying, you keep throwing shit at the wall. Something's, you know, eventually it's going to stick. Right. And I firmly believe in that saying, however, there is actually a video on my website, Shopify versus Amazon FBA. I suggest you watch it. Great video I made uh, a little while ago. I uh, talk about the pros and cons of both. So it'll answer your question. I believe that Amazon is better. Obviously I'm biased, right? Um, but yeah. All right, let's see. Do I have students from the UK or is my course only applicable to USA? Yeah, I have a lot of students from the UK, actually from all over the world. Um, so yeah, have I used Helium 10? I've always, I've always stuck to Jungle Scout because you guys know the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Do I think 3K is enough to get first product or is that overkill? It depends, okay? A lot of people think that 1K is not enough, right? A lot of people think that, you know, um, 1,000, 1,500 is not enough. And that's what I started with. Um, 3K is, you know, if you want to order a large order of like cheap, let's say your product is like $2 a unit, then obviously, you know, 1,000 units with shipping and everything, you're probably going to be 3K, right? So that is enough. Um, I want to say it's overkill. If you've got 3K, then obviously use it. But... Um, you know, it, it depends if, if the product that you're sourcing is like $5 a unit, $7 a unit, and we're talking about electronics here, things that are more complex, things that, you know, that are not just simple, you know, piece of plastic or whatever from China, then it's going to get into 5k, 6k. So it really depends. Jay Lifestyle, what's up, man? I think I remember you from like old live streams. What's up, man? Honestly, it's been a while. I don't know, these allergies have been a little rainy here. I just moved from Arizona to Vancouver because, you know, you don't want to be in Arizona when it's like 110 Fahrenheit. So, yeah, so I live in Vancouver, BC, Canada now. I am Canadian. Okay, let's see. Koza, Dan, I'm a 15-year-old young entrepreneur starting out. What is the best advice for me? I really would appreciate it if I could probably text you because I have some life-changing questions, please. Okay, uh, <laughs> well, you can ask me questions here. You can uh, DM me on Instagram. We'll be more than happy to you know, answer your questions. I try to answer everyone on Instagram. I do get a lot of questions though. But if you're a 15-year-old young entrepreneur, what you need to be doing, read books, okay? Read books and start some kind of business, maybe cleaning windows or even a lemonade stand. Some, start something. You need to learn the, entrepreneur, the basic entrepreneurship principles. And at 15 years old, you don't need to concern yourself with making money because you live at your parents' house, all right? But start reading books. Start early. The earlier you start, the better. Someone asked me, how does it feel to finally be rich, okay? I don't consider myself rich whatsoever. And I thought that this amount of money 
that I'm at right now is rich or my income or whatever. It is not rich, guys. You know who's rich? Warren Buffett is rich. Charlie Munger is rich. Jeff Bezos is rich. These people are rich. They're wealthy and they're rich, okay? But someone who you know is making a seven-figure income is not rich because it can go away just like anything. Just like Jeff, you know, Jeff's income, just like Warren's income, it can go away. Okay, so you always want to strive for more. If I just, you know, if I just said, okay, you know what, <laughs> you know, I'm rich or whatever, and I'm just gonna pack, pack my bags today, I'm done, I'm just gonna, you know, kick back and enjoy life, I will fail. I'm gonna lose everything, okay, because success, I actually saw a quote today, success isn't owned, it's rented, and it, you, you know, you gotta pay the price every single day. It's like consistency in the gym, it's the same thing. If you go to the gym for a year, you're in great shape, and you're like, okay, I'm good now, I'm gonna stay in great shape forever. You're not gonna stay in great shape forever. You're gonna go back, you're gonna basically slowly go back to where you were before, and you know, you're gonna have to redo everything all over again. So, let's see. Best ways to get reviews besides FBA, uh, or sorry, Facebook giveaways, definitely friends or family in the in the country that you're selling in. Make sure that you don't have any connections with them on Facebook or anywhere like that, okay? If you don't have any friends or family, then still use Facebook groups. Uh, you know, in the Amazon Freedom course, we've got a review group, so people, uh, you know, are, are, my students are asking each other for reviews there. Um, obviously, they're not cross-reviewing each other because that's a red flag, but, you know, that's a good way. Let's see. Have I gotten the Audi yet? Yes, I actually did, except I didn't decide on the R8 because insurance on an Audi R8 in Canada is 35,000 or 30,000 a year, which is absolutely absurd. And plus, I actually sat in it and I test drove it and I didn't really enjoy it that much because it seemed like more like a, like a hassle than anything. So I actually want a car that I'll enjoy. And so I actually got myself a convertible S5, like a brand new convertible S5, which is like absolutely beautiful. And so, you know, driving in the mountains, it's like, it's, it's sick. But anytime I want, I can get an R8. I mean, you know, once you're making a certain amount of money and you've got freedom in your life, you can set up your life exactly the way that you want it, right? Don't live your life for other people, live your life for yourself, right? Don't live your life to try to please other people. You know, I'm not out here, you know, let's say buying fancy cars or whatever just to increase the appeal of my channel. I think that people know the reason they watch me is because, you know, I offer legit information on entrepreneurship based on my own personal journey that I'm going through in entrepreneurship and based on what, you know, what worked for me and what didn't work for me, all right? So it's simple as that. Do you think Amazon FBA, like you teach it, will still be able to be done in two to five years? Amazon FBA in two to five years will change so much. And, you know, the internet changes so much. You're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to get get up to speed with everything. Obviously, it's going to be super different. But I think the premise is going to be the same. Selling products online is only starting right now. It's never going to die. It's the future, right? Selling products online compared to what's the alternative? Selling products in a store, obviously online, right? The internet has only been around for, it's 2018. The internet's only been around for like 20 20 something years, okay? So that's like nothing. That's nothing compared to how long stores have been around for hundreds of years, right? Or thousands of years, right? So what are the, some of the things you'd get from a course you wouldn't get from research on YouTube? Um, let's see. Okay, so I would recommend this, okay? You can actually watch some of my testimonials on my, you know, my student interviews on my channel. Um, you know, you've got like, uh, some of my like students that are actually killing it after they took my course, they'll explain, you know, you'll hear it from them. Why, you know, I actually asked them like, Hey, like, could you have done this without the course? Right. I'm just like asking honestly. Right. Because for me, I wasn't able to do it without courses that I took back in the day when I started. Right. And so I asked them and basically I just interviewed, uh, I think Vincent, I think his name was Vince. And so basically Vince told me that, no, it wasn't because the fact that you have a course, you pay for it, which holds you accountable. If you don't pay for something, you're not going to do it. But if you pay for it, First of all, you've parted with, you know, $500 of your money or a thousand or whatever the course is. And, you know, you're like, hey, I want to get my money's worth. So you're actually, it's like motivation for you to do it. Also, it's all the information in one package. So obviously it's a lot better than trying to go through like jumbled information on YouTube, trying to, you know, waste all your time, all your free time on trying to find, trying to piece together information for free when you could have just spent $500 to get a mentor or a thousand dollars to get a mentor, right? Let's see. What books would I refer you guys to read? Great question. I'm actually going to be, um, I'm actually going to be posting a book list in every single video description of my channel. My favorite books. I think every single one of you should read these books because these books have completely changed my life and they will change yours if you actually read through them. And if you actually, you know, if you actually take in the information and take action, um, it's more mostly mindset stuff because 80% of entrepreneurship is mindset and believing in yourself and confidence. So yeah. 
I'm gonna be posting that uh, in my video descriptions probably tonight. So stay tuned for that. Super pumped actually, haven't done this before. All right, let's see. How long have I been selling on Amazon for? I already answered that. It's been just a little over a year. I've done well with FBA considering starting a personal brand YouTube channel, but I know it'll be a ton of work. Do you do a decent amount of income for my first event? Of course. Um, like I said, your personal personal branding is the best income stream that you can have because you, but first of all, don't look at it, at it as an income stream. It's a complete change of, you know, it's a complete, it's a complete change of living because now you're an influencer. You're a person that people look up to. You've got a following, you've got responsibility. You've got to make content. You've got to make videos. you got to, you're, you're got to be there for your subscribers and for the people that watch it because what, you know, if you're not, they, why are they watching you? They could just watch the next guy. Okay, so I'm gonna be um, actually releasing a bunch of videos about how to start a personal brand that will completely change your life. And I'm gonna talk about exactly how my personal brand changed my life, how it made me a millionaire. And you know, because of all the income streams combined, you know, from your, your personal brand, right? With a personal brand, here's just an example. Amazing way to do affiliate marketing. Amazing way to sell products, such as a course, for example, right? If you already have prior knowledge of something. So for me, it was Amazon FBA. I already knew how to do Amazon FBA well. Um, you've got, you know, mentorship programs. What else do we have? You can sell a physical product. So you can sell like, you know, clothing or, you know, you guys have heard of print, print on demand. Um, you know, any kind of product like that, you can sell it through your personal brand. All right, let's see. What are the steps to sell consum consumables? Consumables are very difficult to sell on Amazon. They've got a ton of regulations and I would not recommend doing them as a beginner. I recommend kind of like getting your feet wet and like, a different product that's not a consumable and that you know has less of a chance of getting deleted on Amazon because there are certain FDA regulations um, and health regulations they need to be careful of because obviously not, you know a random person can just throw up a product on Amazon you know and it's a consumable and they can you know throw up like freaking hydrochloric acid and call it like a skin moisturizer right so you know common sense right should you consider buying product liability insurance yes you do 100% um, but not I wouldn't say at the very beginning I would say as soon as you're making money. 100% because you know, just want to protect yourself and it's a cost that's worth it in the long run. Um, please speak more about review dangers in the beginning. How fast is too fast? So what about people guarantee your reviews for a preset fee? Okay. I don't know about people guaranteeing your reviews, but basically with reviews, you know, just, I would recommend getting your friends or family or using review groups such as the one in my course. Um, or you can use, you know, the ones on Facebook, right? There's like a ton of them and about Amazon cracking on a review groups. Um, basically do not cross review each other and do not have any, like, do not send anyone your link to your product. Do not do review for review. That's just a red flag right there. Um, you know, once waiting until the person gets the product before you ask them for a review, uh, make sure that the review is actually like legitimate. You can actually, you know, write out a review and send it to them. That way they can just paste it. That way, you know, you know, what's best about your product. So do not have them as a Facebook friend, you know, common sense, things like that. And that will minimize the risk, right? If you're blatantly, you know, just cross reviewing each other and you're doing it for five or six products, Amazon will ban you. It's very obvious, right? Have I, sourced, have I sourced any products from the USA? Yes, I did one. Do I know what the power list is from Andy Frisella? No, I don't. But actually, I've been hearing a lot of great things about Andy Frisella. I'm going to start listening to his podcast. Uh, I think his podcast is like MF CEO. So I'm going to start listening to that. I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it looks great. So if any of you have listened to it, you guys can let me know if it's good but I've heard great things about it, so. How to deal with price drops in the market? This is a really good um, uh, question. So the thing with price drops is that, you know, you, you guys are always gonna get price drops. You guys have heard the saying, the longer the time passes in a market, the lower the profit is to be made, okay? I think it's a, a pretty well-known saying, and it's true, right? So let's say you're at the beginning of a product life cycle, and it's done for $20. By the time it gets in, the price has dropped to $17 or $16 or $15. You can't do anything about that unless you offer a premium version of the product, bringing the price back out to $20, adding value. All right, let's see what else we got. So yeah, guys, be careful with consumables because I tried doing a consumable when I was first starting out and it didn't work out very well. So I'm just warning you guys, you know, don't do it. Wholesale or PL? Um, definitely private labeling because, you know, with private labeling, you're actually creating a brand, right? You're creating a uh, something that can't be copied. A brand cannot be copied by someone else. If you've got, you know, a brand, a line of five or six products, 
you know, and, you know, suddenly there's brand, people recognize the brand, people know that this particular brand is, you know, a good, a good uh, product, so they'll recommend it to each other, and, you know, you've actually got an asset there, a brand is an asset, so that's the difference. Meanwhile, wholesale, you're just sell, you're just selling products that already exist, and you're trying to, it's basically arbitrage, right, and you're not actually creating any real value, you're not creating any value. I always believe in businesses where you can create value, um, in private labeling, you it can actually create value, in wholesaling, not so much, so... Uh, do I ever have issues with customs? Actually, yes. Um, I think that, you know, if you are a serious Amazon seller, you will sometimes have an issue with customs, whether your product gets held up in customs, it's just a normal thing. It won't happen every single time, obviously, but it will happen. And you just have nothing to worry about. It just will, basically they'll hold your shipment and they'll inspect it and it'll take them like, you know, I've had a product stuck in customs for a month. So, you know, you just gotta wait it out and hopefully you've got a, you know, an income coming in from other products meanwhile, or, you know, you've got a job or something like that. So, yeah. Has anyone that I personally know also become successful with Amazon FBA? Yes, actually a lot of people. Um, you know, um, the person that I was cleaning windows with, my friend from back then, he he's very successful with Amazon FBA. And so, yeah, like a lot of people, I think that, you know, just like anywhere, most businesses do fail because people, why do most businesses fail? Because people give up early. Most people in this, you know, they, they buy the course or they'll watch some of my videos, they'll try it, they'll think it's some kind of get rich quick scheme and they'll think that, okay, you know, they've been working their whole life for nine to five and suddenly tonight they can fix everything, they can become a millionaire. Obviously it's not true. So, you know, if you actually treat it as a real business and if you, you know, really believe in yourself and really create something of value, you will succeed. All right, let's see. Do you need to have automated emails for buyers to get reviews? Yes, you absolutely need an email sequence, okay? You need an email sequence. I talk about that in the course and on my channel, I think. Uh, I'm Canadian, so I'm, gonna make, uh, I'm Canadian selling so on the Canadian market. Want to thank you for all your input and advice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I wanna really, you know, um, talk about, you know, on this channel, the future direction is talking about obviously Amazon FBA, but also talking about other income streams, also building your personal brand. And, you know, I wanna basically talk about, I think that, you know, I've, I've mastered it and I think that I can really, you know, share my experience with you guys and show you that whatever passion you have, you need to be building your personal brand, whether you're doing Amazon at the same time to try to build yourself an income or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, it doesn't have to be entrepreneurship. Building your personal brand is essential in the 21st century. If you guys are, you know, if you guys disagree with me, read Crushed It, Crushed It, I think, or Crushing It, or one of them, it's the new one, Crushed It with the yellow, actually the book is right there. I'm um, still moving my books in, but it's by Gary Vaynerchuk. And basically the whole premise of the book is that building your personal brand is essential in the 21st century and you need to be doing it. All right, let's see. Can you, uh, can you explain how you gain the money to get things like a car and a problem with your profits? Um, I feel like you don't have profits bill because you're reinvesting into the business. Well, you know, just like any business, you've got to reinvest and eventually you can start taking money out of the business, right? Sometimes you can actually take money out from your first or second shipment, right? You can sometimes. But other times you're going to have to reinvest, you know, your first order, maybe you can actually take profit from yourself from your third order or your fourth order, right? Eventually you're going to have a good price. There's going to be a good profit and you're going to have consistent sales. You'll be able to actually take money out of your business, right? But the main priority should be your business. And when you're starting a business, it's like your baby. You've got to watch, you know, when you obviously, I don't know, I haven't had a baby, but when you watch your baby, right, you got to make sure like, Hey, like it doesn't die or whatever. And it's, it's all good. And it's, you know, it's, it's being fed and everything. So same thing with your business, right? I read this in a book somewhere. But, you know, it's like, have, it's like a baby, right? You got to watch it all the time. So eventually, you know, the baby has grown and then, you, you know, you can watch it less and less. So um, do I have any successful students from the UK? Yes, I do. And does Viral Launch uh, work well in the UK? Uh, yes, you should contact them and they'll uh, clarify with you. They'll tell you like how many units you should give away and things like that. So what would you say the success chance of someone investing themselves in Amazon FBA with no entrepreneurship experience? If you don't have the mindset, you are you may succeed you may get lucky and succeed but you it won't be long term and the whole point of it is to be long term is to actually change your life long term so yeah um you know you've got to have the mindset right, All right let's take a couple more questions how do you track your amazon stock level it actually says your amazon seller central um if you just you know use a calculator and you divide by how many units you're selling in a day you'll be able to tell um you know you'll be able to tell basically when you're going to run out of stock and once every order how many suppliers should we talk to? Great question. You need to be talking to a lot of suppliers to get accurate price quotes. If you only talk to one, you're going to get, um, you know, uh, an inflated price. So let's take a couple more questions here. 
Like the vids, man. Keep it up. Super happy you like the vids. Thanks, Robin. Feedback Wiz versus Jump Send. Uh, definitely Jump Send. Okay, can we talk about goals? Um, do you write them down every morning and night? What kind of goals do you write down? Yes, I do. Actually, the notebook for my goals is, okay, it's like right here, but basically I write them down every morning and every night. Um, you know, some days I only write them down in the morning, but the main thing about goals, you've got to make sure there's a time limit to your goals. You've got to make sure that they're attainable goals. You've got to make sure you're aiming high, but they're still attainable. And you've got to make sure that you're writing your goals as if you've already, you've already achieved them, you already achieved them in the present. So for example, I'm so happy now that I'm making, you know, $5,000 a month from my Amazon products. That's a great goal. Keep running that every day and buy a certain time. Make sure you put by a certain time. Ship half by air and half by sea or all the products by air. Definitely everything by air. Um, half C, half air is just a problem waiting to happen because, you know, your, your air shipment is going to come in and by the time it comes in, it's going to, you know, it's going to run out of stock and then your C shipment might not even hit Amazon until like a month later. So it's just not worth it. So yeah. All right. Does bundling kill the competitors? Yes. But then your competitors will start bundling as well if they're smart, which they probably will do. And so eventually, you know, more and more competition comes in, but if you're the first person that bundles something or you're the second or the third, you will make killer money. All right. Let's see what else we got. Harris K, in one year, I'm going to be on your channel as a successful student. Going to buy the course in like a month after my exams. All right. I hope you get in before the mentorship ends because I am like, I do have a lot of students and I'm, you know, I'm trying to answer every single person and I am. But, you know, I want to make sure everybody gets their attention, right? So, anyway, the link for the Amazon Freedom course is below. So, anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the live q and I will be posting another video today. And, yeah, a ton of great stuff coming up, especially on Amazon, personal branding, and uh, passive income. So, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Like the video, and I'll see you guys soon. Follow me on social media, uh, Instagram, and Snapchat links are below. All right, see ya.